Hi everybody and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. Uh, what I'm going to be showing you today is a celebration of Pi Day. Now, of course Pi Day is today, 14th of March. Uh, of course 14th of March is the first three digits of Pi, 314. So what is Pi anyway? So Pi is probably one of the most well-known mathematical constants. Uh, it's equal to the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of a circle. And it's an irrational number, so that means the digits go on forever. Uh, the first uh, you know, four or five digits is 31415926. And of course, when you're doing a mathematical calculation on a computer or in a calculator or even by hand, you can't really work with an infinite number of digits, so you need a smaller number of digits to work with. So you have to approximate pi uh, with a, uh, some sort of approximation. And one way of doing that is to use a, a fraction like 22 over 7 which gives you pi to three significant figures, which is not bad, 3.14. However, in many uh, engineering mathematical applications, you need a, uh, a more uh, accurate approximation. And of course, you can use many different fractions uh, to do that. And, and one of the fractions that's pretty good is 355 over 113, which gives you pi to about six or seven significant figures, which in fact is the ratio I used last year for uh, the pi day celebration that I did then. I ended up implementing that in a two differential uh, system like this we have created the ratio approximation of pi uh, given by 355 over 113 between this point and that point using two differentials so if you want to learn about how to use two differentials to create uh, any kind of uh, fraction uh, look up some of my videos on differentials to find out how to do that um, yeah it'll be, you'll find it very beneficial if that's what you're trying to create uh, so however today uh, I've taken a different approach. I have uh, approximated pi using a binary expansion. Uh, now of course a binary expansion uh, did end up giving me a very uh, large and complex implementation. However it, uh, it worked really well and if you want to find out how I did that uh, please keep watching. Okay so what do I mean by a binary expansion of pi? Well I'm talking about representing pi with a binary number. Now if you're not familiar with binary I'll just quickly go over it. Uh, binaries are simply another way of representing numbers. We normally use the decimal system, which means we use uh, powers of 10 to, uh, to represent each digit. So for example, the number 123.45 in decimal means we've got one lot of, a, of 100, so that's 100, plus two lots of 10, which is 20, plus three lots of ones, which is three. And then after decimal, we've got four lots of a tenth, which is 0.4, and then five lots of a hundredths, which is 0.05. So we can write that another way by saying we've got one lot of 10 to the power of 2, two lots of 10 to the power of 1, three lots of 10 to the power of 0, and of course 10 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. And then we've got four lots of 10 to the power of minus 1, and 10 to the power of minus 1 is a tenth, so that's the same as that 0.4. And then we've got five lots of 10 to the power of minus 2, which is a hundredth, so that gives us that 0.05. So that's how we kind of expand a decimal number into its components. Now we can do the same with a binary number, so instead of using a base 10, we're using base 2 and just uh, digits 0 and 1 uh, for each of the multipliers. So for example, if we've got a binary number like this, 1011.101, what that means is that uh, we've got one lot, 2 to the power of 3, so 2 now being the base, and the 3 comes from uh, the place of the digits, so this is the zeros, 1s, 2s and 3s, so it's 2 to the power of 3, but it's the third one. We've got zero lots of two to the power of two, which is uh, this digit here. We've got one lot of two to the power of one, one lot of two to the power of zero, and again two to the power of zero, just like ten to the power of zero is just equal to one. And then after the decimal point, uh, rather than using tenths and hundreds, we're using halves, quarters, eighths, sixteenths, which is you know, dividing by two each time. So in this case, the point one means one lot two to the power of minus one, which is a half, and then we've got uh, no quarters and 1 8 which is 1 times 2 to the power of minus 3. So again, if we convert that back into decimal, then we've got 8, which is this part, plus 2, plus 1, uh, plus a half, plus an 8. So the final number is 11.625 uh, of, the, of the binary number. So the binary number, this and that, are equivalent numbers. So what I'm saying is I'm going to take pi and write it as a binary number. Okay, so what is pi as a binary number? Well, here it is. So this is the uh, binary representation of pi. Uh, so in binary, pi is approximately equal to 11.001001, etc. with lots and lots of digits. Of course, just like pi uh, down here, this is uh, an irrational number, which means the digits go on forever. And this is uh, about the first 24 digits in binary. 
so again, uh, if we try to convert this binary to decimal, just to uh, show you how that works. So again, this is the twos, this is the one uh, place. So we've got one lots of two, one lots of one. That gives us the three. And in order to create the decimal, um, 0.1415, we need zero halves, because of course a half would make this number too large. We need no quarters, which again, that'll be too large. A quarter is 0.25. But we do need one uh, one eighth uh, because one eighth is one two five, so it allows us to create that first decimal digit of one. And again, after an eighth, we don't need any sixteenths or uh, thirty two. Uh, we need one one sixty four. So if you want to actually uh, convert a decimal number to binary, one way of doing it on your calculator, if you want to uh, create that uh, binary part, what you can do, you can simply take. 0.1415926 and then what you do you multiply that by 2 and if the answer is greater than 1 then you need a, a 1 as your decimal if it's uh, not greater than 1 then you put a 0 so in this case that's the 0 then we multiply it again by 2 to get next digit and again this is less than 1 so that gives us a 0 multiply by 2 again we're now larger than 1 so that gives us that 1 there we then have to subtract the 1 from our answer and carry on. So we multiply this number by 2. It's a 0 because it's less than 1. Times 2. Again, a 0 because it's less than 1. Times 2. We're now greater than 1 and that gives us that digit. So we can carry on this process and, and work out all the digits uh, in terms of binary uh, of a decimal equivalent number. Okay, so why do I want to represent pi as a binary number? Well, the reason is I did some work a while ago on differential topologies, and if you put uh, a series of differentials together like this in a kind of an ongoing pattern, I've just shown four in this case, but you can carry on this pattern uh, indefinitely, uh, then if you've got uh, d1, d2, d3, d4 being the differentials, uh, pretty much uh, connected like that, and the input's connected to the right side of each differential, and the uh, center of the, each differential is connected to the input of the Next different on the left, then you can kind of create a chain like this, and you find if you calculate the output to input ratio, you get this equation below. And if you study this equation, it's actually uh, very similar to a binary number. In fact, it's pretty much equal to a binary number. If you set a1 to a4 either to 0 or 1, then what you find is that a4 represents 8 divided by 16 to 8 over 16 is a half, so it's a4 number of halves. 4 over 16, that is a quarter, so we've got a3 quarters. Uh, 2 over 16 is an eighth, so we've got a2 eighths. And we've got a1 sixteenth. So again, uh, by referencing the binary numbers that we looked at before, uh, this is uh, very much a binary number, at least a decimal version of a binary number. Uh, so I thought, well, if I could represent pi as a binary number like this, then I can, by choosing or setting the A1s to A4s, in fact I'll probably need about 20 of them, uh, to the values for the expansion of pi, then I can create pi as a gearing ratio according to this equation by using this topology, and, and that's what I've done, and that's what I'll be showing you uh, after this. Now one important point to note about this differential topology is that if one of the binary digits that are the inputs to the differentials is equal to zero, so for example if A2 is equal to zero, that means it's independent of the input, and this point is simply held to zero. And what that means is that the relationship between this point and that point is simply a gearing ratio of a half because the differential takes the average of the two inputs and that is the output of the differential. So obviously if this one is zero, then we've got this input plus zero and then the average, which means divide by two, uh, simply means that this point here is this point divided by two. And what that means in practice is that uh, every time there is a zero digit, uh, you can actually eliminate one of the differentials and simply replace it by a gearing ratio of uh, of a half between uh, this input and that output. And that, that's what I've done in uh, my implementation. Alright, that brings me on to the implementation of the actual uh, binary expansion of pi. Here it is. Uh, it's turned out to be a lot uh, larger than I first anticipated it was going to be. Uh, I've implemented uh, 26 binary digits of pi, which gives me a decimal accuracy, I think, of seven significant figures. Uh, so the way this works is that all the digits are color-coded by those uh, black and white lift arms. Uh, a white lift arm representing the digit 1 and a black representing digit 0. So. Starting at the uh, overall left, uh, we can see here at the bottom we've got that uh, white part uh, down here and the red part, and that is the gearing ratio of pi 
uh, between those two parts of your rotation of this we have approximation of pi rotations of the red part uh, we've got the uh, first two digits 1 1 so that represents a number 3 which is uh, this one and this one and then after that we've got the uh, decimal parts so we've got 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 and 1 0 at the end there so uh, that is the expansion of pi like I said 26 digits uh, the whole model is driven by a medium sized power functions motor uh, that is powerful enough to drive this entire model it consists of uh, 202 gears um, I think from memory it's about 74 16 tooth gears 42 bevel gears 33 of the red uh, frictionless 16 tooth gears um, I've got 15 24 tooth 15 12 tooth 11 differentials and finally 12 28 tooth gears in this model Okay, it must be time to turn it on. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. I've got my medium-sized motor connected to the battery box. I will now start the, uh, the binary expansion of Pi. There we go. You can see all the uh, gears turning. Uh, that is the Pi to 1 ratio right there between the white and the red bionicle part. I'll just uh, pan across and show you everything moving. As you can hear, it's a it's a very smooth uh, gearing system. Uh, the medium-sized motor is not having any trouble turning the model. It sounds uh, sounds very very smooth. Just. Uh, Flip it on its side, Let's see underneath, and here we go. So that is the differentials in action, creating all the necessary ratios to create an approximation of pi and binary. Okay, we'll go back to the beginning. pan too quickly otherwise it tends to blur the video and here we have it there is pi being produced or at least an approximation Let's pan out of it there it is it's a large model things got over a thousand pieces Alright everybody, so that was my implementation this year of the gearing ratio pi using the binary expansion. I hope you enjoyed this video, got something out of it. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.